Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, the show where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plotlines. I hit upon a certain realisation while making the Align Through Time episode on Dima C. Looking back on specifically the encounter with Poison, you know, the most memorable scene in the game where not a single line of dialogue isn't the very height of cringe, I realised that this Dante is written like he's trying to imitate the real Dante's wit. Not the writers trying to imitate it, but the character himself. And that's when it hit me. Imagine how much better the plot of the game could have been had this Dante turned out to simply not be Dante. Imagine if Donny had turned out to be some punk kid the real Dante had saved from a demon and was inspired to try and be like Dante, going so far as to use his name and copy his fighting style and mannerisms, but doing so poorly. His attempts at copying Dante's wit just pissed the demons off and his sloppy move execution leaves him unable to adequately defend himself, so Dante has to keep saving him. You can easily imagine a scene where Dante gets fed up of saving him after doing so for the umpteenth time, leading to a harsh lecture. And all the while, the latest demon he pissed off is getting annoyed at being ignored until Dante shoots it in the face without looking as he tells the kid he needs to stop. This could lead to him seeking out demonic powers like Arius, Arkham and Sanctus, turning him into a Syndrome-esque villain that Dante has to fight at the end. I heard from a guy on Discord that there was actually a fan theory along these lines early on. The reluctance the original depiction of this Dante shows in giving his name when asked repeatedly could be viewed as him not actually knowing it until he's been pushed and had a mental break. My name is Dante. So the theory is that he just thinks he's Dante. This could even explain the much darker depiction of the world and the way Limbo breaks apart the human world. He's living in a delusion and only thinks the world is like this, falling into all kinds of conspiracy theory bullshit. Reboot Virgil is thus not actually Virgil, nor even Donnie's brother. He's just a conspiracy theory dipshit that Donnie looks up to and sees as a kindred spirit, thus tricking himself into thinking he's his brother and needs to be found. Kat is just Kat since she already has a fucked up backstory. Desiccated squirrel semen. Together they plot to assassinate CEO Kyle Ryder and various demons who work under him like Bob Barbas and Lilith. They fight their way through the demonic monsters protecting him and... Monsters. They look like monsters to you? Uh oh. The truth is revealed as the real Dante enters Ryder's office to stop them. He's not a demon, he's just an asshole. All this time, their delusional conspiracy theories have led them to kill countless humans. Some were probably deserving of death, but most of them were innocent civilians or security guards just doing their job. They allowed their delusions to warp people they disagreed with into evil monsters to justify committing acts of terrorism and infanticide. Rather than an overdone, not particularly interesting critique of the power of media and consumerism, a theme I've always found baffling in works of consumerist media, the story is actually about mental health and the lengths people go to to justify committing horribly disproportionate acts against people whose views and actions they disagree with. Not the most amazing theme to explore I know, but not nearly as blasé and oversaturated as what we were given in the actual game and it's somewhat appropriate in the current media landscape. Plus, Ninja Theory did have an interest in the former theme going off their subsequent project. So Dante confronts them, Cat has a break down, Donnie fights Dante with the demonic power he acquired and believed he had unlocked in himself, and probably Virgil turns out to be a demon manipulating them the entire time. You know, because Dante vs Virgil as the final boss fight has to be done, I guess. The game would probably end on a sinister note, with the now institutionalised cat claiming her name is Lady as a tease for the cycle continuing in a sequel that would never happen. Kinda like they did in the real game. Of course, tonally, this seems really out of place for classic DMC, but there are some darker moments in the canonical spin-off media, so it could fit. But even so, I acknowledge that it may well have been better for this game to be in its own universe. And franchise. It's just that, taking the character we were given, and being told to accept that this is a version of Dante, it just seems really disrespectful to the original character, you know? It's like being given a totalitarian dictator with an S on his chest and being told this is Superman, or a callous goofy asshole and being told this is Frank West. It's very easy for punished Venom Dante to come off like a better alternative, you know? And as a closing thought, did anyone else notice that DMC seemed to take inspiration from everything but DMC? That's weird, right? It takes Angels and the concept of Limbo from Bayonetta, enemy and level design from American McGee's Alice, gritty reboot about the origin story of a younger, less interesting version of the main character from Tomb Raider, and script quality from Rob Zombie's Halloween. And I got a bigger dick. At least DMC5 is drawing on things that are more appropriate, like Persona. Hey, 
If you liked this video, why not subscribe and check the description for more content. If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Also with your friends so I can become a real YouTuber. 